In the PKM community, one can't help but notice the textual bias. When you were a child, what did you do first? Draw or write? People often say that a picture is worth a thousand words. But is this statement really true? Hey, I'm Jolt. Welcome to Visual PKM. A few weeks ago, I had the honor of attending the PKM Summit in Utrecht, the Netherlands. There, I connected with over 150 PKM enthusiasts, including people I've followed for years, such as Nick Milo and Nicole van der Hoven. My agenda was packed with three presentations, each covering a different aspect of visual PKM. Together with Nick and a room packed with people, we explored the similarities and differences between productivity and sense-making using the double bubble map. Nicole and I ventured into the world of tabletop role-playing games and their intersection with PKM using Excalidraw. This video is a recap of my solo presentation. For those intrigued by the universe beyond this video, I've included relevant links in the video description. In the PKM community, one can't help but notice the textual bias. The credo writing is thinking resonates widely, underscoring the profound connection between articulation and cognition. But pause and reflect for just a second. When you were a child, what did you do first, draw or write? Throughout your years of education, how much time have you invested in the painstaking process of mastering the alphabet, learning your vocabulary, and reading increasingly difficult texts? Now, think about the amount of effort you've invested in nurturing your visual thinking skills. My advocacy is that by spending a comparatively small amount of effort on learning visual thinking, you can rekindle your childhood skills and take your thinking to a whole new level. People often say that a picture is worth a thousand words. But is this statement really true? Could you meaningfully summarize an average 40 to 60,000 word self-help or business book with 40 to 60 illustrations? Would that adequately cover the contents of the book? I've tried it. By now, I've summarized over a dozen books into book on a page summaries like this one. This is the periodic table of productivity based on Ali Abdal's book, Feel good productivity. These experiments into visual synthesis not only challenged the boundaries of conventional note taking, but also unraveled a spectrum of insights on information capture, retention, and use. This is my journey. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I was studying at the university. That was over 30 years ago. That is when my interest in personal knowledge management started. Back then, I was focused on figuring out how to efficiently collect, store, and organize information to make it useful, essentially to help me pass my exams. This journey led me to create my own systems and tools to store, organize, and make sense of all the information I encountered. Over the years, I've tried many systems and ways of doing things. I found it hard to link my notes together, and most of the time, my notes were just text. Even when I added pictures, I couldn't change or connect them to other notes. These tools just didn't fit how I wanted to think and work. Text-based notes are linear, meaning you have to read the words one by one to understand the information. Often you need to go through the entire page to grasp the full message. However, this isn't how knowledge forms in our minds. Instead, we understand information as interconnected web of concepts and relationships. 
This is how we transform complex information from the outside world into knowledge in our minds. The author starts with intricate ideas and information, translating them into a sequence of words that we then listen to or read. As we process these words, we begin to form mental models linking new or familiar concepts in our brain and establishing connections between them. Visual thinking then allows us to externalize this mental model onto paper, creating a feedback loop that helps us verify our understanding and integrate the new information into our existing knowledge. Now, two-dimensional personal knowledge management or 2D PKM involves jotting down notes in a notebook or saving them as distinct unlinked files. Typically, you would scan these text-based notes from start to finish to locate the information you need. They are commonly stored into folders, introducing two dimensions, the linear text as one dimension and the individual documents as the other similar to standalone files in a folder. You can upgrade your 2D PKM to 3D PKM, which aligns more closely with your thought processes by incorporating links and tags. In 3D PKM, you continue to work with primarily text-based documents and retain the two dimensions of linear text and individual documents. However, you introduce a third dimension with links between the notes. These links can include index pages for easier navigation, content maps, and ontologies for added context. Some pages might even become dynamic, such as queries based on information in your notes. This approach to 3D PKM is exemplified by practically all modern PKM platforms. 4D PKM takes it a step further. It builds on everything from 3D PKM, but moves beyond text-based notes to non-linear notes that merge images, links, tags, and text. This method keeps all the advantages of 3D PKM yet it lets you quickly absorb information without the need to read line by line. The Excolidro plugin in Obsidian is the most comprehensive tool I know of that adopts this approach. Think of it like comparing text documents to visual notes. Text documents are like looking through a long shop receipt, while visual notes are like glancing at a shop window display. This shows how visual notes can make finding and understanding information much easier. Over the last three years, I've created two plugins that support how I work because I couldn't find any existing tools that met my needs. That's why I think Excolidraw and Excolibrain are so powerful and unique. They're designed for Obsidian and bring 4D PKM capabilities to life. To maximize the benefit of these tools, I created the Mindset Visual Thinking Framework. It encompasses all the visual PKM techniques I use regularly. This framework is designed to enhance your PKM experience, significantly increasing the value you gain from reading and note-taking. Here's a bird's eye view of my entire framework. It consists of 32 cards. We'll explore five of these briefly to give you a taste of the mindset. Let's start with my card on visual thinking, a topic we've already touched on. The idea here is to take the concepts and relationships you grasp from listening to or reading text and visualize them. By drawing out these concept maps, you engage in creating a feedback loop. Now let's pause the presentation for a moment and look under the hood. Because this is not just about having a visually appealing slide. 
Then I click on this card, a list of linked references appears, including topics like the memory palace, concept mapping, mind mapping, and cognitive loops. Next, we'll navigate to the cognitive loops link. Clicking on this link will bring up an image, my visualization of cognitive loops. To explore this further, let's open Excoli Brain and look at a dynamic mind map view of these links. You'll see that my note on cognitive loops is tied to my book on a page summary of The Extended Mind by Annie Murphy Paul. In her book, Annie describes humans as inherently loopy creatures, highlighting our method of processing information by taking it in, externalizing it, and then reabsorbing. There are various ways to externalize, creating spatial loops through drawing or using a whiteboard, generating loops with others by sharing our ideas, and even internal loops by tuning into our feelings and reactions. This illustrates how you can interconnect cards and visually navigate your notes in Obsidian. By crafting visual summaries of what you understand, you foster external cognitive loops. The next example I want to show you involves what I call link and think icons. The main idea here is that the icons throughout my notes aren't just decorations. I use them to connect ideas. I've created an icon library that's automatically generated from the icons in my vault, organized by a specific naming convention. Whenever I need to illustrate something, this library is my go-to for inspiration and potential reuse. Now let's delve into a concept I call the idea mixer. We look at the idea associations for the curiosity icon. At the center is the curiosity icon encircled by various other visuals from my obsidian vault related to my use of curiosity. This method is particularly powerful because it brings together ideas from a wide range of sources. For example, it encompasses the quest for truth as discussed in Eliezer Yutkovsky's Rationality, the role of curiosity in posing questions as seen in Decoding Greatness, and its position as a motivator outlined in Zinke Arendt's How to Take Smart Notes. I won't go into all the details here, but the ability to link diverse ideas across my vault with a single icon illustrates the strength of visual connections. This strategy has allowed me to weave together numerous concepts by using consistent visuals across different contexts, greatly boosting the connectivity of ideas. The next card is about Legoized ideas, the visual equivalent of atomic notes. Instead of starting with an atomic visual, I usually begin with a visual for a broader topic. Then when I need to reuse part of that visual elsewhere, I carve it out and repurpose it. For instance, consider this illustration of a neuron. Initially, I created it while reading about myelination in deep work by Carl Newport. You'll find this neuron in my book on a page summary for deep work. Later, while reading Emergence by Steven Johnson, I encountered a discussion about the absolute refractory period, also called fatigue, driven by inhibiting feedback loops. I carved out and reused the same neuron here. Furthermore, when exploring rationality by Eliezer Yudkovsky, I came across a discussion about the role neurons play in participating in the cause and effect chain. This decomposition and reuse approach is a fundamental pattern in my thinking. By breaking down ideas into atomic components, and organizing them into layers, 
I've transformed these notes into interconnected visual ideas. Now let's explore the forcing function concept in action. This concept is incredibly valuable. It involves condensing a visual summary of your note onto a virtual post-it note. This allows you to navigate ideas at a higher meta-summary level. If we open this card in Excalibrain, you'll see this card at the center, surrounded by a host of linked ideas. Similarly, if we move onto the Link and Think Icons card, you'll find this card again at the center. This method enables me to condense ideas visually and then use these visuals to connect and navigate my notes at the meta level. This takes us to the final card from the mindset that I wanted to showcase today, the Visuals as Zettelkasten Notes card. This concept involves flipping the virtual paper over and examining the text on the back side. By clicking here on Open as Markdown, I can access all the details on the back side of the card. Related videos, metadata, tags, links with ontology, detailed descriptions, and more. However, if I want to focus on the idea at a higher level, I can view the visual side of the note. I can include this card in different views, like my overview for the Mindset Framework, or this presentation today, or the idea mixer we discussed earlier. Regardless of where I reuse this card, I always have the option to flip it over and access all the detailed links, videos, ideas, notes, tags, and other metadata on the back side. To tie everything together, I developed the Visual Thinking Workshop, a six-week deep dive into the Mindset Framework. We explore visual thinking through the case study of reading a book and creating a visual book on a page summary. In cohort 9, running from June 2nd to July 6, we will explore The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. If you're keen to learn more about 4DPKM in practice, now's the perfect time to join. Because I want to keep these workshops relatively small, aiming for groups of 20-25 people, and because there's an increasing interest in the workshop, I've slightly increased the price. But if you register for Cohort 9 before May 1st, you can enjoy a 20% discount of the new regular price. Don't miss out on this chance to take your PKM to the next level. In conclusion, I wanted to leave you with four practical takeaways you can implement today. First, select a concept that resonates with you and create a visual representation. This exercise will stimulate your imagination and will likely uncover new insights as you translate ideas into visuals. Second, enhance your ability to connect ideas by developing a visual vocabulary. Establish a set of icons that you consistently reuse across different contexts to facilitate connections between concepts. Third, view illustrations as reusable Lego blocks. Keep your visuals simple to maximize their versatility and ease of reuse across various scenarios. Finally, don't fall into the I'm not an artist trap. Illustration comes in many forms from basic mind maps to stick figures. Remember, you don't have to create every visual from scratch. Utilize existing resources and tools such as icon libraries to support your visual thinking journey. Thank you for joining me in this exploration of visual personal knowledge management. If this presentation resonated with you, consider participating in the upcoming Visual Thinking Workshop. Remember to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts below. Your engagement supports this channel and our community. I look forward to welcoming you to our next Visual Thinking Workshop. Thank you.